about 2,500 years ago. The now lecturing platform at Mount Zhongnan was enveloped in mist and exceptionally quiet. However, beyond the mountain was a chaotic world, tormented by violence. Over a span of some 300 years, from 770 BC, when the Eastern Zhou Dynasty was founded, to the spring and autumn period in 476 BC, numerous wars occurred. More than 100 vassal states perished in succession, and the people were reduced to utter misery. Lao 不祥之气也，不得已用之。Laozi didn't blindly oppose war. He stressed the need of a just war. If there is a war, there must be a way to end it. How to win a war? He offered some direction on this. Many found it hard to understand what Lao Tzu was saying. However, a military strategist in the same period explained war in a very compelling way. All warfare is based on deception, he said. The theory is believed to have been used in all later period wars. This idea came from Sun Tzu, known as the ultimate military strategist. In 506 BC, troops of the state of Wu captured Yingdu, the capital of the state of Chu. Wu Zexu and Sun Tzu were Wu army commanders. Their troops numbered 60,000. They deceived the enemy by marching in a thousand mile circle, catching the enemy by surprise. In five battles, they defeated more than 200,000 Chu troops. Suddenly, the 300-year-old Chu state faced extinction. Sun Tzu thus assisted the Wu state to defeat the Chu state with his military strategies. His book, The Art of War, contains a comprehensive description of his war strategies that have been studied and implemented by successive generations all the way to the present time. The art of war is a military work, but also a philosophical treatise imbued with Taoist thought. 
Across 13 chapters, it depicts a world threatened by repeated wars. It delineates that yin and yang undergo mutual transformation, which represents the dialectical philosophy of Taoism. Why were the ideas of Lao Tzu and Sun Tzu so close? Did Lao Tzu ever offer suggestions to Sun Tzu in this regard? The two lived in the same era but there is no evidence they ever had a discussion on the subject. In the pre-Qin era, with so many scholars, it's not in the least strange that these two men would share some cause and philosophies. When Dao Te Ching spread from Mount Zhongnan to other parts of China, wars among the vassal states didn't fade away as envisioned by Lao Tzu, but instead became more frequent and tragic. Lao Tzu's strategy Weapons of war may be used with crafty dexterity, found vivid expression in these conflicts. In 262 BC, the Qin state and the Zhao state fought ferociously at Chongping in the state of Han. Both were the most powerful of the seven states. One million Qin and Zhao troops fought numerous bloody battles in an attempt to vanquish the other. In the beginning of the war, the Qin troops gained the upper hand. Led by a very experienced general, Yan Po, the Zhao troops built fortresses to wait for chances to defeat the Qin. The Qin army suffered heavy losses, but had no way to turn the tide. Zhao troops followed this path for three years. Both states were close to financial ruin. They tried to fight a quick battle to end the conflict. According to Lao Tzu's philosophy of warfare, the general must try his best to employ certain schemes and strategies to win the war on an ever-changing battlefield. Qin state and his subjects plotted a breakthrough. They spread a rumor that the Qin feared General Zhao Ku due to his fierceness. The Zhao King was duped by this and replaced General Lian Po with Zhao Ku, who was actually a greenhorn in war. At the same time, the Qin king gave Bai Qi, 
Lord of the Martial Peace, command of an army of some 600,000 troops in the fight against the Zhao. All of this was able to take place without the Zhao knowing because the Qin King decreed he'd behead anyone who leaked the news. Zhao Ko was inexperienced in war. He changed Lian Po's defensive strategy and organized a life and death fight. This proved a fatal mistake. Without knowing the enemy's situation, a commander shouldn't rush to attack, which was one of Lao Tzu's military strategies. When Zhao Ko staged an all-out attack on Qin troops, General Bai Qi saw it as the dawn of victory on the eastern horizon. Lao是何为弱？弱则为柔，天下之至柔，驰骋于天下之至坚。那柔如何能克坚呢？你我坐下真实，千沟万壑，全凭上上流水之力。天下莫柔弱于水，而共坚强者莫之能陷。老者的一个重要军事论断就是柔弱胜刚强，要实现柔胜刚，弱胜强，是需要智慧和力量的完美结合。General Bai Qi knew the Zhao army was powerful but that its general was inexperienced. So Bai Qi decided to show weakness and avoid a direct confrontation with the Zhao army in an attempt to win the war with minimal loss. Bai Qi knew that Zhao Ko was out of the way of the Qin Jin's strength. He was in the media. He knew that the Qin Jin was in the media. He knew that Zhao Ko was in the media. He knew that Zhao Ko was in the media. In August 260 BC, Zhao Ko launched a life and death attack. After a slight confrontation, the Qin troops began to retreat. Zhao Ko ordered a pursuit. When the Zhao troops made their way to where the Qin army was, they met stubborn resistance. From Yu Li Zhi, Yang Bai Er Zhou, 同时安排两股兵马，两万五千人，以超赵军后路，构筑坚固营垒，以抵御赵军的进攻。用五千轻骑插入赵军营垒，将赵军切成两段。According to Lao Tzu's military theory of the soft overcoming the heart, Qin General Bai Qi retreated for the sake of advancing. He struck only after being struck. The Zhao army was besieged for 46 days. When they ran out of food, the troops faced almost certain death.
Zhao Ko was in a quandary. He personally led the elite troops to try and force a way out, but was killed by a Qin arrow. All of his 400,000 troops were starving and faced imminent death. They eventually surrendered to the Qin army. After this battle, the six states east of Shanghai Pass were unable to resist Qin domination. Teacher, Laozi believed that war is the greatest sorrow and the root of the world's misery. The wisest commanders should be good at reining in their ambition and desires and eventually win the way without fighting. He believed that real heroes are those who can avoid wars. In the early 13th century, the Mongol Empire began to rise. Its cavalry slaughtered people here and there, plunging Asia into a time of terror. Chu Chuji was the fifth teacher of the Chuanzhen school of Taoism. In the early spring of 1220, Teacher Chu and some of his disciples were trekking in an area north of the Gobi Desert. Chu and his disciples were summoned by Genghis Khan, the Mongol leader. Chu didn't know about the Khan, and he worried about their safety. Chu was sorry to see the suffering of the people while on his journey. To end the Mongol reign of terror, the 70-year-old Taoist chief was determined to meet and try and persuade Genghis Khan to end the violence. This was a legendary meeting. Some 800 years ago, Chiu Chiji lectured on Taoism at Genghis Khan's tent out on the grassland of Central Asia. No records are available regarding what he said to the Khan, but at least history offers an answer. 
In 1223, Genghis Khan began to retreat from Central Asia. Also in 1223, he ordered an end to the harassment of various states in the Central Plains. People finally had the time to recuperate. In the ensuing decade, no major battles were fought along the Yellow River. Dao's teacher, Qiu Juji, followed the spirit of Lao Tzu in speaking with the warlord. Facing Genghis Khan, the words of Lao Tzu weighed heavily on his mind. Preaching, being calm, reflected his desire for peace. Before he went to meet with Genghis Khan, teacher Chu Chuji expressed his thoughts in a poem. I still miss Shandong after traveling this long. I am going to see the emperor to try and bring about peace. 